Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Heavenly Realm podcast. We are talking about a really out there <laughs> thing today. It's kind of crazy, sounds kind of wild, but I just hope that you listen with an open heart with empathy and compassion and understanding because a lot of what I'm going to speak about today, like I said, sounds very crazy to those of you who have never heard about this, but it's a very real thing that a lot of people believe in and non-Christians and Christians alike. This doctrine is actually coming into Christianity and we're going to get into that later on in the podcast, but we're just going to talk about the gospel of the starseed agenda because it is a form of a gospel. It is a kind of good news to the world. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we're going to kind of compare and contrast them too because they have a lot of parallels actually between each other, but also there's a lot of lies within that too. So... A lot of the language that I'm going to use today is very specific, very niche, but I am hoping to target a very specific audience, uh, mo more so people that are in this belief system and kind of explain to them what it is. But also, like I said, for Christians too that are tapping into these things or also those of you that are interested in knowing this, um, maybe there is someone in your life that is in this belief system and, or you just want to be equipped to know how to speak to those that are under this deception. So a lot of what I'm going to speak about today is very out there. It's very, it sounds crazy, but I just hope that you listen with an open mind and an open heart in that you don't condemn these people or judge them into condemnation um, and that you just have empathy and love for them because you don't just wake up one day and just decide that you're a star seed this is a slow trickle that happens when you are in a false light when you are in pagan spirituality and in the new age. So it's a very slow thing, but when it happens, it really is all encompassing. So let's just get right into it. What is the starseed gospel? What is the starseed agenda? In the simplest terms, a starseed is a being from another planet or another dimension that comes to the earth to bring healing and bring the earth from 3D consciousness into 5D consciousness. And upon doing so, the new earth is established on the earth. And so the whole essence of this is that if we raise the vibrations of the planet, we can ascend and we can go into another dimension, bring the new earth, and we do so by sharing love and light. And so love and light, you probably hear about this a lot. Uh, all of the New Age uh, spiritualists use this term, and it can mean different things for different people. For a lot of people, uh, they go into veganism, you know, anim animal rights activism, environmentalism, and they believe that by sharing these things with other people, they can raise the vibrations of the earth. Um, other people are very much into the ancestral eating, you know, right me, just ancestral primal living. And they believe that that is the way to share love and light. And so one problem in that is that love and light, something that is supposed to unify the earth into another consciousness, into another dimension and ascend it, there needs to be an objective unified way to go about that and so that is a problem in the new age and in, in this deception that it's all about your truth my truth our own ways to perceive love and light and so for the vegans it's all about well it's all about vibrations right and so the vegans think that plant-based eating is high vibrational 
and animal consumption is low vibrational and yet the animal eaters don't agree with that so what is the truth what is actually ascending the earth into 5d that is a problem that people kind of brush to the side and kind of build up on that because they don't really want to face it head on um, they don't want to they don't want to address the obvious problem in that the logical fallacy that there is no objective way to quantify what is a high vibrational or a low vibrational thing and what that is is basically vibrations and frequencies are scientific terms right like it's all over the universe it's all over creation and these things are not evil god created these things and these are things that can be seen in the natural world air has a vibration sound has a frequency so what the new age spirituality does is they take these things well what satan does it he manipulates creation he puts a twist in it and makes witchcraft out of it so what this does is the application what's evil about this is the application of metaphysical and spiritual meaning behind vibrations and frequency so if you hear these terms it's so important not to just demonize them it really depends on the context in which someone is using them because if they are using like i said spiritual or metaphysical implications on implications on these things that's what makes it evil because there is nothing there is no objective spiritual meaning behind low and high vibrations of the earth but like i said in new age spirituality high vibrational things um are the good things the love and light low vibrational things are evil things darkness um and just like dark entities things like that things that do not bring upon the new earth but the thing about it is that the new age doesn't recognize good and evil in the way that the bible defines it they perceive good and evil as two sides of a coin um and if we apply what we know about the truth about the bible this would imply that Satan, the source of evil, is Jesus's counterpart. If there are two sides of the same coin, that means Satan is God's counterpart. And we know that's not true. We know that evil isn't as powerful as goodness because God is the almighty God is the most powerful being on this universe he is a creator there is no equal to him so to say that satan is his equal would just be wrong um light eradicates darkness completely it does not share any space with it um light and darkness cannot coexist so that is not um something that is supported by christianity um that is because evil in the new age is not defined as is not what we know it to be so there was no satan basically <laughs> like there's no source of evil um demons and like negative entities were called shadow um projection so basically just a reflection of the darkness within you a projection of the darkness within the world you know it's just a counterpart of the duality of one um it's not a source outside of you that needs to be eliminated like we perceive it to be so the new age doesn't see evil in the way that we do they call bad things low vibrational so because there's no definite and objective definition of evil they partake in things and they call it whatever they want because it's all perception and so there is just this salad of doing whatever they want and somehow the star seed people are going to bring the new earth <laughs> um it makes no sense because there's no objective foundation there's no strategy there's no unification of this of these ideas 
if everyone is doing whatever they want with no actual goal, um, there's no way that this is going to change the earth because essentially it's just doing what humanity has done from the beginning of time, which is doing whatever they want. Um, that is what Jesus came to do. He came to define, to objectify, to solidify things that could be validated, things that could be quantified as evil and good. This very definite, like definitive book that is the Bible defines what is good and evil. It highlights, it's a manuscript to truth. And so that is what the Starseed Gospel fails to do. It doesn't give clear instructions on how to bring the new earth. As you know, scripture also talks about the new earth, but the instructions, the pathway to it is very clear. The new earth will come upon the earth upon a complete eradic uh, complete elimination of evil, of Satan. And so this happens through the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus pays the price for sin. It covers sin. It makes a way for sin to be completely eliminated because sin is the root of all darkness, chaos, and hurt in the world. So with the Starseed Gospel is just like any other thing in the new age, what it does is it offers a solution to a problem that they don't define. So the problem that, you know, these star seeds, these people that fall into this, into this deception, um, the problem that they want to solve is they just want healing, right? Like there is obvi obvious darkness in the world, um, but every but they fail to realize, and the Starseed Gospel fails to de to define that the root cause of every single evil on this earth is sin. Sin is the cause for poverty, for sickness, for disease, for hurt, pain, trauma that you experience in this lifetime, is because of sin because we are living in a fallen world. And so what Jesus came to do is he came to defeat sin through the cross. So everyone in the new age talks about, you know, leaving the matrix. You have to leave the, the matrix. What that is, is the world system. It's the systems of the world. But only Jesus said, I am the door. He is the door that would essentially take people out of the matrix out of the systems of the world because when we are in christ we are no longer bound by the systems of the world and so it's like a bandage right like satan offers healing um by putting on a bandage it's like counseling the problems without actually getting to the root because satan wants you to continue to do everything that leads to sin but he'll make you feel good doing it. <laughs> like he'll tell you, you know, if you are a star seed, like if you continue to do yoga, meditate, like all these things, like they will make you feel good for a time and you will perceive healing that happens, but really your life remains the same because you're not addressing sin. And only the blood of Jesus can take you away from sin. And, it, and it's not something that, you know, it's not a exchange. It's not a transactional thing. Like, uh, sin is not something that you tell God, I'm going to stop doing so that you give me the blood and you give me redemption. No, Jesus gives that to us for free. But what that does is it, removes the bondage that we have of sin. It removes the need to partake in the things that actually lead to destruction. And that's what it's called being born again. And so the being born again aspect is uh, one of the one of the other parallels that the star seed gospel has, um, but they call it, being born again unto the earth. So essentially a star seed is a being from another dimension or planet that is born again unto this earth. And so now they are they are experiencing life through the now, through this 
vessel. And so they, there's that parallel of like being born a second time, but Satan is so, <laughs> he is so sneaky. He is so deceptive because he will give you these truths that your spirit recognize as truth because our spirit knows, our spirit knows God, our spirit yearns for God. And so it tries to find God the moment we are born, we are not we are on this journey to finding God. And so when we get told these terms like being born again, new earth, um, we have to ascend, we have to leave the systems of the world, like all these things, they start to resonate on the part of our spirit that recognizes truth. However, because of our soul wounds, because of the conditions of our soul, our soul hasn't been renewed yet, right? It's still... Uh, darkened by sin and hurt and everything in this life. So because of that part of us, we fall into deception and we don't find the true gospel. And so the thing about the starseed um, agenda is that it preys on the weak people. It preys on the lonely people. It preys on those of us who have tried to find healing and it just starts slowly. Like I have heard so many testimonies, so many stories, myself included of, you know, just Googling, like, why do I feel so different from other people? Why do I feel like an alien? Um, these are all sentiments that a lot of us um, share. And we are the, sp the target audience for Satan to implement that deception onto because it stems from a need to be understood. To, to heal. And when you look that up, like if you go anywhere to ask someone or look that up, anyone that is spiritual outside of God, they'll tell you like, you know, maybe you're a star seed, maybe you are a rainbow child, um, indigo children, rainbow children, crystal ch children are probably terms uh, that you, you have heard. Um, they're more popular, I think, than star seeds and light workers. Um, Essentially, what this is, it's like, um, like for example, indigo children are children that have special abilities or, you know, very talented from a young age or very empathetic, very sensitive and intuitive. And so all of these uh, characteristics of these types of people, um, they all kind of share the same things and essentially like all of these are beings from another dimension like if you are intuitive you're probably a star seed like if you are creative you're probably a star seed like basically anyone on this earth that has like ta a talent or feels lonely or misunderstood it just it targets these people and they are told that whatever gift that they have whatever talent their sensitivity their emotions they have the responsibility to bring healing into the world, that they can bring healing into the world by sharing these things. And so what it does is it, it makes people the savior, the salvation for this earth. But that is a logical fallacy because the problem cannot be a solution. And I say this about the New Age all the time because that seems to be the common, denom common denominator behind every practice about every modality that it makes us the savior it makes us the gods you know we are told we are gods we are the gods um because like i said our spirit recognizes slivers of truth and so we know that a man that a person that a human has come to redeem the earth but instead of realizing that it's jesus christ we think that it's us our spirit knows that a human being came to do that, that a human being will do that, but it's not us. The New Age tells us, the Starseed Gospel tells us that we can bring healing into the earth, but we can't because we are the reason the earth looks the way that it does. Humans are the reason of all of the chaos, all of the war, all of the hurts, all of the trauma, poverty, sickness on this earth, like we are the cause. And a select group of people isn't going to change that. 
we literally need God. And so that is another parallel that kind of masks what it actually is. Um, let's get a little deeper and let's get into the Galactic Federation. So please bear with me. I said, I told, I warned you guys, this was going to get a little wild, but this is a reality of a lot of belief systems out there. And so if you are um, in this belief system, I just want you to know um, that there's no judgment or condemnation. Okay, Jesus wants to show you and reveal truth to you. And sometimes truth is uncomfortable. Sometimes truth will hurt your feelings. But the world kind of brainwashes people into believing that love is commodity, that love is um, permission, that commodity is, or that love is uh, permissive. Um, but that's not real love. Love is also, besides the feeling good aspect of it, love is also protection. Love is truth. And protection is going to make you uncomfortable at times. And so please don't think that everyone that has a different or has an opposing view of what you believe in, that that person is out to get you or has some sort of like anger or hate towards you. Um, most people that share truth with, the, with you, they are only doing so because there is a moral responsibility. It is not personal. So I just hope and pray that in the same way that you allowed the star seed thing and the new age spirituality and all of these beliefs come into your life, um, you share that same open mind as you listen to everything else that I say. Um, anyway, so the stars or the Galactic Federation, what it is, is it's essentially like a council, an alien council. Um, and when I say alien, I don't necessarily mean like the gray things with the big eyes. Um, some of them are, <laughs> but it just means like beings, entities from another dimension, another planet. Um, and these are basically like the ascended masters. Um, Jesus Christ is one of the galactic members, um, Buddha, amongst other things, other beings like Lord Sananda is one of them. He seems to be one of the main ones. And the belief system is that if you call upon him, um, he will actually, actually, he will be one of the rulers of the new earth. Um, but he's actually Lucifer. We're going to get into that. But the reason Jesus Christ is even one of the Galactic Federation members is because he is not seen as God, right? Jesus Christ is just another ascended master, according to the New Age. And um, because they don't believe in him as the Messiah, as the way, the truth, and the life. So what the Galactic Federation does is they kind of are like spirit guides and they they are channeled through the star seeds and they are given revelations, instructions, and how to further raise the vibrations of the earth. And what happens is that a lot of these people um, channel these beings, these entities through what is called light language. And what light language is, is like tongues. Like if you've ever received the gift of speaking in tongues, if you can speak in tongues, that is what it is. Um, the Holy Spirit speaks through you when you speak in tongues, but entities, other beings speak through you when you are speaking light language. And it sounds a lot like gibberish mixed with like different languages. Um, it just, um, it sounds very similar, but the one difference is that when you are speaking light language, when you are channel channeling these entities, your free will is completely taken over. Like a lot of these people, when they do that, they black out and they don't remember what even happened. They don't even remember what they wrote, what they said. But there's an aspect of your free will remaining intact when you're speaking in tongues because the Holy Spirit will never overpower you. Like he will never... Uh, 
he will never take advantage of your free will. Like you have to say yes to God to do, to do that. You have to yield. Um, but where the Holy Spirit needs you to yield to him, Satan and his demons, they want to control you. And so a lot of people think that speaking in tongues is the same thing, but it's not. Um, but like I said, this is just another counterfeit parallel between the two. Um, so what people don't understand is that they say, well, why is this evil? You know, why is the star seed agenda evil if I'm just, at most, I am practicing veganism, right? I'm trying to be good, do good by the earth. Like, why is it evil? The reason that it's evil is because it's not the truth. It's Luciferianism. And what Luciferianism is, is they, Luciferianism takes Satan as the light bearer. It makes Satan the light bearer, like Pandora's box, right? The illumination of good and evil, the emanci emancipation of darkness and ignorance upon the earth. And so Satan is perceived, Lucifer is perceived as, and Satan and Lucifer are the same things, by the way. Um, Lucifer is just his original name before the fall, but they don't see him as a fallen angel. They see him as a God entity. And so what, how they view him is, uh, the light bearer, the emancipator of men that brought light and knowledge unto the earth. And the reason why all of these things, like the star seed, astrology, like tarot, divination, everything outside of spirituality with the Holy Spirit, all pagan spirituality is Luciferianism. Because what Luciferianism is, is the not the secret knowledge that was given to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, right? So that was Lucifer, that was the snake. And what he said to them was, um, will make you like God. You will become like God with this knowledge. What that is why occultism is what it is. Lucifer shone the light on the occult. It revealed the occult. That, that's why the occult isn't hidden. Like the occult isn't everything. It's astrology. Like you go to half price books and you are seeing books on witchcraft and all these things. Um, the occult is just um, secret knowledge made available to men. And so all of these things exist. All of these things are creation created by God, but what happens in the heart that is not holy, it is twisted and it hurts us. It is perverse. Satan lied to them and he told Adam and Eve that this knowledge would make them like God, but there's only one God and God can have this information and still be a holy God. But at the hands of humanity, it falls apart. It becomes evil. It becomes wicked. Scripture says that our hearts are wicked above all. We are predispositioned to evil. We need a savior. And I know this is an issue. People get so hurt and they cry when they are, are told like, yo, I hate Christianity because it makes people, it's spiritually abusive because it tells us we're evil. Like we're born evil. We need a savior. What is wrong with that? That is pride. There is nothing wrong with needing a savior. There's nothing wrong with, with redemption. There's nothing abusive or toxic about the understanding that there is lack, intrinsic lack in us. But people use this kind of talk and rhetoric to minimize Christianity as an oppressive religion rather than one that is meant to free us. It's just it's this manipulation and it's the rhetoric from the pits of hell because it kind of flips the tables around because what we, what the world perceives as a freedom is actually bondage, but we don't see it unless we have been given the mind of Christ and we have received illumination from the Holy Spirit to see 
the spiritual implications behind everything on this earth, behind every sin, behind every action that leads to sin. And so Lucifer, everything, all, all new age spirituality is Luciferianism. That's why it is so harmful. It is false light. That is why this is called false light spirituality, because on the outside, it's all love and light. And yet Lucifer, Satan, hides himself, masks himself as an angel of light. Scripture tells us, tells us that Satan will actually take upon the, um, the, a light body, you know, like a harmless entity in order to deceive you. False light. Luciferianism is false light because it highlights the occult. It makes it available onto man without us knowing that we cannot handle information that only belongs to God. Only God, as the creator, as a holy, set-apart God, can hold these things and not be evil and not turn evil. So that is why it is wicked. That is why the Starseed Gospel hurts us, because it's Luciferianism. Yeah, it's all good on the surface. You're doing good on the earth. You think that your talents are going to heal people somehow, and yet your soul is being led into hell. That's how Satan works. He will give you beautiful things in a bow and a sparkly crystal, and you will believe that as long as you're not killing children, as long as you're not uh, being evil in the world, you're not worshiping evil, you're not, you know, whatever it is, whatever morally dark thing um, that you're not doing, then you're going to heaven. But no, heaven and hell lies in truth. That is where the, the path leads. If you know truth, you're going to heaven. If you don't know truth, you're going to hell. That's all. That's it. Like if you remove the emotional aspect of it, it really just comes down to knowing truth. And so even if you perceive it to be harmless, know that the spiritual consequences of believing in a gospel that is not addressing sin, that is not addressing the root, is going to do you more harm than good. It seems harmless because it's a deception. If it wasn't a deception, it wouldn't be harmless. That is how Satan operates. He operates through the hidden, through the occult, through the, through the shadows. And so this belief system, believe it or not, is actually seeping into Christianity. Uh, there is a very popular prophet in L.A., and he has lots of spiritual sons and daughters. One of his spiritual daughters is a prophetess, and she tried to recruit me into her school, right? What she does, like what this school is, is kind of like a rehabilitation center for people that have come out of the new age. And so she kind of targets people that have come out of new age spirituality and kind of like retrain them, like kind of reveal and like help them receive the mind of Christ and know the truth from the lies. Um, and so something that she does is she teaches people that they are angels she she took the star seed like she basically kept the star seed gospel but just changed the names um she won't call them star seeds but she'll call them angels and how this happened is um because in scripture the word stars and angels are kind of synonymous for each other um we see it in the book of revelations we see it in the book of luke or isaiah where uh, Lucifer, his story is talked about. And so the star, the word stars, because they're interchangeable with angels sometimes, um, she basically made a whole doctrine out of that and said that, oh, like there's different types of stars according to the Bible and you are technically a star seed, but Satan just gave you the wrong idea of that. Um, you are still a being from another planet, but you have been 
being you have been uh, reincarnated into this human vessel to preach the gospel essentially this is not this is not right like what <laughs> um you cannot make a doctrine out of isolated verses in scripture like it just doesn't work that way um everything has to one of the, the ways to test the validity in a doctrine is if we see it throughout scripture if it is supported if it is according to the will of god um the concept of reincarnation is not biblical the concept of being born not of mud <laughs> is not biblical um the concept of being of dying twice or like being born again into another body is not biblical we have been given this lifetime and this lifetime only and we will be judged at the end of it death comes once and then and then comes judgment so the, this belief system is still kind of sprinkled, sprinkled throughout Christianity in different ways, but you have to be discerning. You have to catch it. You have to have the Holy Spirit, guys. Like, it's so important to have the Holy Spirit because there are so many new doctrines out there, doctrines of demons that are within Christianity now. And a lot of them, like these prophets or teachers, whatever, they will give you scripture to back themselves up. Like, they they will twist scripture whatever means necessary and because of this people will say oh then it must be true you gave me a verse to support your beliefs it must be true but satan did this too he did this at the garden and he did this in the desert to jesus he used scripture to support his twisted doctrine so that is not enough it's not enough to read scripture. It's not enough to listen to, to sermons. You have to have the Holy Spirit. You have to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And so right now, I just want to pray for you. I just want to pray for your discernment. I want to pray that you are filled by the Holy Spirit. That is the only way to navigate these. Uh, it's the only way to navigate uh, the times that we're living in now where the truth is has become even more narrow and hard to find because the scripture actually calls the gospel of Jesus a pearl, the pearl of greatest value. And it's rare. And there's only one. <laughs> he didn't say, it's funny because like, even in that, he didn't say the pearls. You know, he said the pearl of greatest value. The, the road is narrow and the road is one. And so if you don't have discernment, you're going to have a hard time navigating these things. Um, before I pray, I just um, encourage you to ask me any questions. Like if you have any more questions about this, if there's anything that I missed and you would like to know, um, comment, leave me a comment or send me a DM. I would love to continue speaking on this if you guys want more information. Um, I hope this helps you speak to people in this space if you're one of these people in this space i pray that even if you don't believe me it's fine just ask for truth ask for truth like tell god even if you don't believe it's jesus tell god reveal truth to me because every single person believes in a god every single person believes in a creator in a higher force in a source a source of all things a higher consciousness right everyone believes in that but if you look for truth and you are set on finding it, you will. The truth is Jesus Christ. And if I, I don't have to convince you, that's not, my, that's not my job. But the most beautiful thing is when we have a personal revelation of the truth, that we have an encounter with Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. And so just meditate on this. Chew it. Chew it over. Chew it over with Twix. Just kidding. <laughs> um, just Think on it, chew it over, and may you find truth in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray right now. Father God, I pray for every single person listening to this podcast, watching me, 
or listening, I pray that you just begin to remove the shackles from their eyes, that you begin to remove the scales from their eyes, from their spiritual sight, Lord, and that you reveal the truth of the starseed agenda, that you reveal the all of the lies that have been um, mixed in with the true gospel. I just pray, Father God, that you give everyone a revelation of sin, that you give everyone a, re a revelation of the Holy Spirit, of who Jesus is. And I just pray that you embrace everyone right now watching this. You embrace them with your love because, because love covers a multitude of sins because your love did that on the cross for us and that you show them the life that is available in the true gospel. I just pray right now, Lord, that the eyes are open, the shackles are removed, that sorcery and witchcraft is removed. We come against all sorcery. We come against all witchcraft now in Jesus' name. And I just pray, Father God, that these people may find you, that may find you at the end of the road of their journey for truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I hope that this was helpful. Um, that's all I have for you today. I will see you on the next one. If you have any ideas, any topics that you'd like me to discuss, also let me know. God bless you. <laughs> Bye.